Do you know that feeling when you really mess up? When you sign up for something but you're totally out of your depth and kind of freak out a little bit? That's pretty much what happened to Ibn al-Haytham, a 10th century mathematician and scientist who got a little bit ahead of himself, but as a result ended up discovering the camera and laying the foundations for modern science. So it kind of worked out for him. Al-Hassan ibn al-Haytham was born in 965 in Basra, in an incredible time of scientific and mathematical development in the Muslim world. He became pretty famous for his knowledge in maths and physics, and actually ended up claiming that he could control the dangerous flooding of the Nile. That sounded pretty good to the caliph of the time, who invited him to Cairo to give it a shot. When ibn al-Haytham arrived though, he quickly figured out that he actually couldn't do what he claimed he could and was in way over his head. Unfortunately for him, the Caliph, Al-Hakim, was a particularly controversial figure who might have been a little bit crazy and he was definitely not very happy that Al-Haytham didn't do what he'd promised. So Ibn Al-Haytham did what anybody would do. He pretended to be insane and got locked up in house arrest for the next 10 years until the Caliph died. It was in those 10 years that Ibn Al-Haytham made some incredible discoveries and advances in science. See, the Greeks had this idea about the way vision worked, which was basically that we saw through these laser beams of light that shot out of our eyes and landed on the objects we were seeing, and this was pretty much the standard understanding until the 10th century. However, Ibn al-Haytham had been playing around with this thing called the pinhole camera, which had been created by ancient Chinese inventors, but was only really further explained and developed by Ibn al-Haytham himself. He performed experiments on how glass lenses refracted light and magnified images, leading to an understanding of optics that later was used to invent the modern camera, as well as developing a completely new theory of how we're able to see. He managed to accurately describe the anatomy of the eye for the very first time, and then drew from a number of different theories and scholars to meticulously explain how, instead of shooting out laser beams, the eye actually constantly receives light that's radiated from the objects around it. This book, Kitab al-Manazir, was the foundational text in the field of optics for the next 600 years. It's still used today, and it was so influential that they named a crater on the moon Al-Hazen in honor of the role Ibn al-Haytham played in developing the telescope. While doing all this, he also just happened to simultaneously lay the foundations for modern science. His reliance on controlled, repeatable experiments and logical processes to explain his theories, what he referred to as i'tibar, was the first of its kind. It was later obsessed over by Roger Bacon, and heavily influenced the work of Leonardo da Vinci and Johannes Kepler, leading many people to call him the actual father of the scientific method. Sorry Francis. So the next time you interview your head, don't worry too much. Maybe you'll end up changing the world, like Al-Hassan ibn al-Haytham. <laughs>